Hey everyone, I'm Jordan Powell, an engineer here at Cyprus, and I'm so excited to announce that in Cyprus version 10.5, we've added support for component testing in Angular. Cyprus component testing provides a testable component workbench for you to quickly build and test your Angular components regardless of complexity directly in the browser using the same Cypress API many of you have already been using for years. In this video, I will show you how easy it is to get up and running with component testing for Angular. Before we get started, it's important to note some of the fundamental differences between end-to-end -end testing and component testing. Component testing uses the same Cypress test runner commands and API as end-to-end -end does. However, with component testing, we end up testing our components instead of entire pages. Under the hood, the primary difference is that component testing builds your components using a development server shipped by Cypress instead of rendering within a complete website. This results in faster tests and fewer dependencies on infrastructure. When we look at these two types of testing side by side, we see both of them have their own benefits. Benefits of end-to-end -end testing include ensuring your app is functioning as a cohesive whole, tests match the user experience, they can be written by developers or QA teams, and they can be used for integration testing as well. Benefits of component test include that it's easier to test components in isolation, they're fast and reliable, they're easy to set up specific scenarios in tests, and they don't rely on external systems to run. As you can see, component testing does not replace your end-to-end -end tests, but rather it is a great sidekick to ensure your applications are always working as expected. To get started, navigate to the Angular CLI project you want to test, or you can generate a new one using the Angular CLI by typing ng-new and the name of your app into your terminal. Then we need to install the latest version of Cypress by running npm install d Cypress at latest. This will download the newest version of Cypress into our project's node modules folder as a dev dependency. Now that we have the newest version of Cypress installed on our application, let's launch it using MPX Cypress Open. If you are updating an existing application that uses Cypress for end-to-end -end test in a version prior to 10.0, you will notice quite a few changes to your Cypress workflow. I included links to our Cypress 10 migration guide in the comments of this video. Once Cypress opens, the Cypress app will prompt you to choose either E2E testing or component testing. Choose component testing and step through the configuration wizard. This wizard will detect your framework, generate all the necessary configuration files, and ensure all required dependencies are installed in your application. After just a few clicks, we have successfully configured component testing in our application. It's now time to write our first test. Let's assume our application needs a button component. It will take an input property named label that will be used to display whatever text you want inside of the button. It will also have an output that will get emitted once the user clicks on the button. Now that we have the component created, Let's create the corresponding component test. Now if we run our button component test inside of Cypress, we will get a passing test and we will see our button component mounted inside of Cypress. Now we want to verify that when we pass our component and input label, it displays inside of our button. Again, if we run our test inside of Cypress, we will see our tests are passing. Notice we are using the optional mount config property as the second parameter of our mount function. This can be used to pass in component properties like inputs or outputs, or even to provide the Angular compiler all the declarations, providers, or imports our component depends upon. Now we want to verify that when a user clicks on the button component, that the onClick event emitter is called. Now 
Notice for this use case, we are using a Cypress spy to spy on the emit method of our onclick event emitter, and then creating an alias called onclick spy, which we can reference later to assert that it has been called. Though this approach works, I feel it is a bit clunky. Here are a few additional approaches you can use to test the same exact scenario. The Promise API, using the create output spy function exported from the Cypress Angular library, or using the auto spy outputs flag of our mount config. In addition to the example above, you can also use the template syntax to mount your components. Let's use the same button component to try this out. Notice this approach has a trade-off. Under the cover, mount uses Angular's testbed to configure your test. When mounting using the class syntax, we are able to take the component you pass it and automatically add it to the testbed declarations array for you. However, when we use the template syntax, we are unable to infer which component you are mounting as it is read as a string. This means you are required to manually add it to your declarations array. Let's now add an input and output example using the template syntax. Congratulations, you successfully written your very first Cypress component test for Angular. In this release, we support Angular applications using version 13 and 14, and it even works for standalone components. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Now get out there and write some more tests for your Angular applications.